Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint this paper mache mailbox so that we have a place to put our letters to Santa Claus. I'm going to share a template on my blog so that you can print it out and paint this motif here or the candy canes there. I'm going to explain how to paint everything and it is fun and easy. And if you've never used acrylic paints before, this is a great project to get you into it. And you can even paint this with your kids. We're going to be using brushes from our sponsor, FabArt. And not only do I have the free template for everybody on my blog, I'll be giving away sets of these brushes to a lucky viewer. So you're going to want to make sure you go over to my blog. I'll put a link in the description so that you can uh, enter to win. I'm also going to have a coupon code in the video description. If you want to order these last time I showed you guys fab art brushes, they sold out in two hours. So if you want these, if you've got a kid on your list that you want to get some really nice brushes uh, for Christmas, this is a wonderful opportunity to save 20% and do that. And the thing that's really great about these is that um, these are more for the younger kids, but as you can see, we're going to use these to base coat. They are fantastic for adults as well. But the great thing about these is that they have plastic handles. So if they leave them in the water, they're not going to get ruined. I do have a brush here that I left in the water. And what happens is the wood swells, then the, then the paint can chip on the outside and then it flakes off and then the ferrule can get loose and if you've ever tried painting with a brush where the metal part was just wiggling around on you it is so annoying and that's not going to happen with these brushes plus they're nice and soft I've used them with watercolors they work really well for watercolors and brush lettering so if you are an adult that has a tendency to leave your brushes in the water you know I want to think about these brushes as well but they are fantastic for kids too and I've actually used these for face painting and they're since the bristles are long and nice and soft they're really good for face painting as well so very versatile set, 20% off coupon code in the video description and a chance to win on my blog. What more could you ask for? What, what, what else do you want, guys? <laughs> I'm feeling silly. Let's just go to the table and paint this fun paper mache mailbox. Okay, we have all our supplies here at the table. I'm going to go over some uh, materials with you and show you these brushes from our sponsor, FabArt. You can find them online. I'll have a link in the video description with a 20% off coupon code. And if you go to my website, I will be giving away this value pack here, the uh, the kids try art brushes and the chunky brushes. So you don't want to miss that. And I will have a download of the pattern here that we're going to transfer on to our mailbox but you could definitely use this on a greeting card if you didn't want to do a paper machine mailbox so the first thing i want to take a look at are brushes and paint so um these are all your soft nylon brushes they're very similar to the interchangeable brushes i showed you before uh, these are back in stock by the way if you were looking for these um these are obviously meant more for adults. You have small pieces. You wouldn't want to give these to a small child, but they have that soft um, nylon bristles. These are a little stiffer than these, so I just want to let you know that. And these have plastic handles, so the nice thing about this is if it gets left in the water, um, like your kids are painting, and you just say, well, just leave your brushes in the water. I'll clean them in a minute, because uh, if they're doing acrylics, you want to make sure they get really clean. Um, it's not going to damage them if you forget about them and leave them in the water, because they have a plastic handle. And they don't roll off the table, because they have a tri-grip, and they're just really comfortable to hold. Now, these brushes are shorter. They're meant for little hands. They've got big barrels, but they do have, I believe these are a wooden barrel. I am pretty sure they're painted wood barrels, so you don't want to leave these in the water. Plus, they'll float because they're not tall enough to stick out of the jar generally. But uh, you have six that have the synthetic, uh, soft synthetic bristles with long bristles, which is nice for kids because you can teach them not to let the paint go up to the metal part. Teach them to keep it down the tip of the brush so that they don't uh, let the paint dry up in the ferrule and damage it. And you also get six of the uh, hog bristles. And there's um, three rounds of three flats of each size. These are all probably about three quarter inch. We are going to use uh, the flats for base coating. And I just want to show you the difference here in like what paints to use with what brushes. So generally, your hog bristles are meant for stiffer paints, higher viscosity paints. And your softer brushes are meant for thinner paints or lower viscosity paints. So what I'm going to do here is just squeeze out a couple different paints for you. Here I have a high viscosity uh, white, and you can see it just kind of holds a peak there when I squeeze it out. And then I'm going to put on medium viscosity. We'll put this blue here. This is my favorite acrylic. I like this Turner Acryl gouache because it it just um, it just works really well. I just want to make sure you can see it where I squirt it, and it does hold its shape, but not quite as peaky as that one. And then we've got this um, Flow acrylic 
fluid acrylic, it's called. So a lot of times these are called high viscosity. Um, this is an aqual gouache, which is kind of in the middle, and this is a fluid, which is kind of like an ink almost. So if I squeeze that out, you can see it just kind of wants to puddle out. So if I was base coating this, which we're going to do in a second, I want something that's going to spread out evenly and be like kind of one coat coverage. So my pick for this would um, actually be the middle, the middle uh, color there, but I'm going to show you here. I get a nice dry brush. So I want to show you first this fluid acrylic. Okay, you see it's, it's almost like ink. It's very transparent. You even with this soft brush, you can see my brush strokes. Now let me go over to the, I'm just going to wipe it off, wipe off that extra paint. Now let me go to this, um, aqua gouache I'm getting a nice opaque coverage because that's kind of a a quality of the aqua gouache but look it's not leaving brush strokes very smooth now I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a clean brush and just show you this white one now with the thicker paints I'm gonna have a harder time spreading this out with a softer brush because it's gonna leave a lot of brush strokes and it's gonna be a little tougher to move you totally can um, but even when you get the extra like high viscosity paints it might be difficult to push them around especially a textured canvas with these thin brushes so if, like on a smooth craft mat it's not a big deal but on a textured canvas you're gonna have trouble so what you'd want to use is a stiff hog brush and this is great because I can just I could like pick it up and put it on like branches for snow it has no problem moving this around and it, and it doesn't give me too many brush strokes because the thickness of the paint matches the stiffness of the brush now if I use one of these hog brushes with the um, with the fluid paint it's very streaky I see a lot of brush strokes it almost wants to scrape it around and leaves me all these um, kind of gullies in between my brush strokes it's not exactly what I want and here with the acro gouache um, it does spread it around all right, but again, I'm getting those streaks. So you just want to match the softness of your brush with the thickness of your paint. Just keeping in mind, thicker paint, you want a stiffer brush. Thinner paint, you want a softer brush, and you're going to be all set. Now we're going to mix the paint for our base coat. I'm going to start off with a little bit of black. I want a midnight blue, so I know if I take some black and blue, I can end up with a nice dark midnight blue. So I got cobalt blue and black and I want a lot more blue than I want black and I want to mix up enough that I'll be able to base coat everything. It's not a great idea to mix with your brush when you're mixing a large amount of acrylic paint. Instead, I recommend you use a palette knife and this is going to let you get this mixed up really well without damaging the bristles of your brush. Because What happens when you mix with a brush is that you end up um, working that paint up into the metal part, the ferrule, and you never want to let your paint get up there because if it gets up there, it can dry up there, and if it dries up there, then it's going to spread your bristles apart and you're not going to have that nice sharp edge. Also, the nice thing about mixing with a palette knife is that you don't waste any. If you're mixing this with a brush, you end up spreading it all over your um, craft mat or all over your palette, and then a bunch of it would dry there and you wouldn't get a chance to use it. So I can squeegee this right up and make sure that I don't waste any of it. So um, a small investment in a palette knife will save you a lot of money in paint down the road, and you can even get a plastic one that will work just as good. And I'll clean off the excess there with my brush, and then I can start painting. And you can just, to clean this, all you do is wipe it off. I would definitely not set this in the water just in case it uh, oxidizes or rusts or anything. And it's so easy to clean. So now what I wanna do is, um, I'll try to keep paint off of the handle. <laughs> I am going to use this soft flat brush. So you want a big in size, wide in size, soft in texture, and I am going to base coat my um, my mailbox. I'm not going to base coat the uh, the flag because I want to do that kind of like a candy cane stripe. But I'm going to base coat the rest of it. Paper mache is really nice to paint on because it doesn't require any prep. And I find that if you use a good quality acrylic paint like aqua gouache, because it tends to be a little opaque, you can do this in one coat. So it's really going to be a time saver. So what I want you to do is go ahead and coat your entire mailbox, except for the, except for this flag and except for the rim of the front here. And we'll be back when that's done. I've got my base coating done and it's all dry and something that didn't occur to me when I was painting this is that I was going from a couple different brands of paint and um, the acryl gouache I was using which is a matte acrylic paint dried to a nice velvety finish whereas the white that I had grabbed actually has a little bit of a gloss finish and didn't cover quite as well so I'm gonna be using this white uh, gouache to go over that with one more coat um, in a little bit but first I want to get my pattern onto my mailbox and I'm going to show you how to do that without any special materials. 
You're going to need a piece of light colored chalk. You can either use a pastel or a just a regular chalkboard chalk. They'll both work. And I recommend that you cut your uh, pattern up so that it's easier to deal with. Once you've cut your pattern, what you want to do is rub the back of it with your chalk. and tap off the excess into the trash. Now don't worry if you end up getting some chalk where you don't want it. You'll be able to remove it with a damp Q-tip. I like to keep just regular cotton swabs around for this. They work fantastically. And you can, if you don't want to deal with this, you can actually get white transfer paper, but um, pretty much everyone can find a piece of chalk and it's very affordable to do it this way. Then you want to take a ballpoint pen. It doesn't even have to be a working ballpoint pen, just something that you can trace over and pens work really well. And then you're just going to go over your design. The nice thing about going in a different color ink than what you printed it out in is that you can see where you've been. So I'm using this blue pen and I can see exactly where I have, um, where I've gone and where I haven't. And this is the same technique we're going to use for the candy cane on the uh, front and end of our box. And you can use this anytime you want to transfer an image onto a painted surface that's a little bit darker. You could do the same thing with charcoal if you wanted to transfer a pattern onto a white canvas. You can even do it with a pencil. You could scribble the back with a pencil. Then I like to just peek underneath and make sure that my design transferred. I can see that it's just fine so I can remove it. Now it's not going to give you a super bright image, but it's going to give you enough of a guideline so that you can paint this between looking at your sketch and looking at the lines that have transferred. So it's not as perfect as if you use a store-bought uh, white transfer paper, but it's pretty darn good. Now we can get our paint out and get ready to paint. One more thing I wanted to mention, a lot of times these round brushes will come with these little caps or sleeves on them. I don't want to put them back on to, you know, because I don't want to damage them. So once you take your new brushes out, Throw away these sleeves. Don't try to put them back on because chances are you're not going to protect the tips. In fact, you'll probably split them apart and damage them. So these go away as soon as you get your new brushes out. So I thought that I would start off by rinsing the sizing out of this brush because I all have a little bit of sizing in them to protect them. And I'm going to use this quarter inch flat to create the, um, the little evergreen boughs in the background because I like to work back to front in acrylics because it just, it's opaque and I can keep layering on top on like watercolor. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of my um, nice evergreen color. And I'm going to start by putting in the center branch there. And then I'm just going to kind of pick up the uh, green on its own and just pull out some bristles. Now against the dark blue, I can see that that green is kind of dark. Now, depending on what brand of paint you're using and what shade of paint you're using, yours might look just fine and dandy. But for me, this looks too dark and I'm not seeing the bright color that I want. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow and that's already enough to brighten it up a little bit. And by the way, the surface I'm working on here is a, uh, is just a Teflon oven liner. You can also buy them at the, you know, craft store and pay a lot more and they're called craft sheets. Um, but it works really great. Also a silicone mat, anything like that. And I can just wipe it off, spritz it with water and wipe it off when I'm done. Oh, does not look much brighter and it really stands out. There, I like that a lot. So I'm gonna do the same thing to any of the other little branches that I have. Now look at this, if I go right in here with just that lighter color, it's not very interesting, it really lacks dimension. So I think it's nice to mix your own colors and have that little bit of variance because it just gives you a lovely depth. Now, while I'm at it with that color, I want to make this apple here, I think I wanna make it kind of a, um, a golden color. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab some more of that yellow, maybe a little bit of that brown, make this kind of golden brown. And I want to do at least one of the apples. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do that color. Let's see. Maybe, actually maybe I'll do this one in the middle, that color. The funny thing is when you're mixing paint, 
a lot of times it looks a lot different on your palette than on a colored surface because this is a, like a royal blue surface so it looks a lot different so I need I look at that and like I need more yellow and probably a little more white probably a little white into that mix to make it opaque oh that's really showing up a lot better now so we'll put that right in there if you didn't want to do apples you could do like jingle bells or um, or whatever you like so I think I want to show you this brush here. This is a Filbert and it's got these rounded bristles and you probably remember that from my brush video. And what I want to do here is I'm going to paint this pine cone and I want to start with some shadows. I'm going to go in with some black and some brown, make this really dark brown. So I've got burnt sienna and I've got black. And typically I don't use black, but I use black with the blue in my base coat layer. So because of that, I'm totally fine using black now. So what I'm going to do is actually, I could paint the whole thing and then um, dab on the highlights later, but I'm just a little concerned where we're going with our pattern that we've transferred that if you have never painted a pine cone before, that may actually be a little bit more work and you might lose your, your lines and be a little uh, stressed out about that. So we're just going to go in and dab in some shadows here. Now, dirty brush, I'm going to pick up some white. Okay, and I'll pick up some brown. So I'm still getting those colors in there that I used already, but I am lightening them up. And I can pull in a little bit of that uh, mix if I feel like it's a little too light. It's really hard to tell how light it is until I go ahead and put it on my, um, on my pine cone here. Just flicking in these, these little uh, scales. Now your acrylic paint is gonna dry a lot quicker than oils, so if you're used to doing oils, this might um, seem a little a uh, little weird. And you can see what I meant about, because I had that paint on my brush and wanted to get something painted with it rather than waste it, but you can see how it's kind of difficult to go and paint around that because I put that thing in front. I could just paint it brown and then paint the yellow on top because of the properties of acrylic paints. So I'm gonna rinse that off. I'm going to grab my smaller filbert and I'm going to go back in. I'm just actually going to pick up some black on my brush. I'm going to look at my reference photo. And I am going to go in and put in my shadows again. I'm not trying to create a perfect rendition of a pine cone, but I do want it to look like a pine cone. So I'm just doing little strokes and because of the shape of this brush, it wants to give me a nice pine cone shape because this is kind of the shape of those scales. So it works out really well. Just don't overdo it. I know I was in danger of overdoing it there. Now filler can also be used on its side. I'm going to do the brown and black again and I can use a brush on its edge and I can pull up these branches. For my little berries there. Now I gotta be honest with you, for doing berries I really like to use my finger, especially if your fingernails are cut short um, because it'll work really well. Um, I'm just gonna get some paint on my finger and typically I wouldn't be holding this up like this but I just want to make sure that you're getting a good angle, you're getting a well lit angle and I'm just gonna press. Now I can touch this up with paint with a paintbrush and I will but this will give me my basic shape that I need. All right, so then I can wipe my finger off and I can do a little blending with uh, one of our other brushes. So it's up to you whether you want to use a little filbert for this or if you want to use a round brush, um, completely up to you. I think any of them are going to work pretty well. Some of these I want to make a little bit bigger and I want to grab a little, um, a little yellow and I'm going to pull up a little bit of a highlight here. I'm going to mix that right in. It's going to give me more of like, when you're looking at berries, they're not usually so so red in the wild. They have a, usually a little bit of an orange cast. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add that little bit of a yellow highlight and just kind of smooth out and round out any um, any of my berries that didn't get too round because sometimes that happens. You know your fingernail will hit the will hit the surface or something but it does give them a little bit more life. 
and we're not using a ton of colors. I have like six colors, six or seven colors out, um, and I'm mixing from those, so everything should match and look really nice together. And we're going to keep using those colors throughout our composition on our mailbox. Everything should work out pretty well. Now I want to make a shadow. What I'm going to do for that is, um, my brush is damp. I just do this on my hand sometimes just to take the extra water off. Uh, what I want to do here, I'm going to take a little bit of red and a little bit of blue and it's going to make a really neutral dark. It's going to make almost like a wine color. And that I'm going to do at the bottom of these berries. Again, you could do this, you could side load this with a um, flat brush if you wanted to, if you're a little more experienced, but I'm keeping it kind of easy because um, I do want this to be doable for beginners or people to do with their children. So I want to get those other apples in there and I think I want one to be red. And um, I'm going to show you how flat works. I really like the way a flat works for base coating. So when you're, it's kind of base coating when you're put, putting your bottom layer down. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill that in. I'm going right over those berries. And I might need to make my berries gold or silver or something for the bottom. And that's fine. It would be very awkward if I tried to paint around all of that. So now I'm going to go with my shadow color. I'm just picking up a little bit of blue and some red. And I'm going to go ahead and put that down on the bottom and also next to the other little apple, the golden apple there. And if I need to blend it more because paper mache does seem to dry very fast. I think it's because it kind of absorbs the paint as well as, um, as well as it's sitting on top. I think it kind of dries it, like sucks in the moisture too when we're going. So there's that one. And I'm going to do the same thing to this one over here. Sometimes you look at a painting and you decide, oh, I wish I did a little bit of this or a little bit of that somewhere else. And I'm thinking, I wish I had some of those um, evergreens down here. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in. I'm going to grab, um, I'm going to grab, I'm just going to do, my, do it with my flat brush because it'll be just as easy to do it that way. My same center color, the center stem color, the brown and green. I'm just going to throw in a couple little pieces, a couple little, little barbs there. Then I'm going to pick up my dark green just on its own on my chisel edge. And I'm just going to flick in, flick in some little, little leaves. I guess you call them leaves, spines, something like that. Put some over here, going right over my, I can go over the berries, I can go over the fruit. Then I'm going to grab the yellow. Remember how we did that? We went with our yellow and that made everything nice and bright. Chisel edge again. And the nice thing about using the flat brush is that I think it keeps you from being too fussy. Like if you're using it, it's quicker than around. It holds more paint than around, but you can still keep that, uh, that sharpness. And if you feel like you get too much light in there, just go back in with some dark and, and add some of that into the mix. Try not to be too fussy about it. I just felt like, oh, I wish I had some texture in there and I'm gonna do it. Now I have that, that darker green on my, on my brush. I'm gonna go back in and paint this guy in the front because I just feel like I lost a lot of him when I was, when I was, I was trying to, you know, what do you call it? Stitch in time saves nine, but Pennywise pound foolish. That's what that was. Pennywise, I didn't want to waste that paint on my brush, but then I ended up having to redo it anyway. So I'm just going in and repainting this kind of goldeny green apple here. Maybe add a little bit more gold, adding a little bit more of like taking some of the yellow, adding a little bit of brown to it. So I have more of a golden, golden delicious or something instead of a Granny Smith. And we'll put our berries on after. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna worry about that really. I got too much paint on my brush. That's why I'm getting those ridges. And go back in with that dark at the bottom. Okay. Oh, let's round that out. If you have a, take the time to fix any awkward 
shapes that you might have. Sometimes if I need to just get a fresh color, I'll just go in and get a fresh brush. I feel like I want that a little bit brighter, so I'm going to bring in a little more yellow up there. You don't have too much time to blend when you're using these paints. Okay, so I was thinking that maybe these berries I'll do in gold instead of um, instead of red. I'm just going to pick some up on my finger. Oh, I think that's going to work. The uh, metallic paint is a little trickier. I think it wants to uh, need more of a texture. But we can fix any um, weirdness with our brushes. I'll grab this little filbert because it's round. It's going to be easier. So, you know, really, when you're using your paints and you're painting something, you can use whatever brush is best for your technique, whatever you like best. And now I'm going to put my little stems in. I might as well just use the same brush. I'm just going to pick up some brown and black. And... My little stems in there. Okay, so we're gonna need some stems on our apples and also a little pit where, where our stems gonna come out of. So I'm taking the blue and red again, mostly red, just a little bit of blue, and that's gonna give me my shadow color. I'm gonna put that in here. And I kind of covered up my area where I was gonna have it over here. I put a berry there. Um, so maybe I'll put it up a little bit higher. And then I'll just use a wet Q-tip when this is all dry to remove any marks that don't line up with my original drawing. That's fine, we make changes, we make, uh, we change our minds. And I've got brown on my brush and I tipped it in some white. And I'm just gonna add a couple little stems there. And now we get to do our highlighting, which is really fun because I think it really makes everything come together. And um, I'm, again, with this round brush, this is uh, number zero round. I am using white. And I'm just gonna go, I've gotta pick a light source. I'm gonna pick my light source to come down from here just because I think it's gonna, um, I think it's just gonna, it's gonna look good. And that way I can just kinda, I like to pick a light source so I can kinda figure out where everything is gonna have its highlight. So I'm putting my little highlights up on the upper right hand corner of stuff and it really helps give shape now i'm taking that i'm watering down the white it's kind of like a cream consistency i am just going to go in and add a few little highlights Just uh, take your time with this if you're going to do it, because I think if you get, uh, if you don't, if you rush it, you're going to end up with uh, blobs. And you got to have that paint nice and thin to do it. But it really does bring out the texture in the, um, in our little evergreen. You're not pressing hardly at all. You just want to be like kind of just gently grazing the surface, kind of like a butterfly kiss. And then I do want to get something on the tip of those little, I don't know if I'm going to put snow on them or not. I do want to kind of, so these little comma strokes here. You press more, you're going to get a thicker stroke. And you press less, you'll get a thinner stroke. I don't know if I want snow on these. I can always add snow at a later time. I think for now, I'm going to leave it like that. I've already transferred my design onto the front of the mailbox and I'm going to base coat the candy canes white. Then I'm going to switch to another brush. I'm going to go with a little round brush and I'm going to put the red stripes in. You don't need to let the white layer dry first if you don't want to. But I do recommend doing this before you put the, um, before you put on the bow because it's just going to be easier if you're not trying to get around that. You can do red and green stripes. You can do double red stripes like I'm doing here. It's completely up to you. And now that that's dry, I want to put a shadow on the candy canes to make them look a little more three-dimensional. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of blue and water and a little bit of black 
and what and you know just adding quite a bit of water in there I want a cool shadow but I want it to be transparent so that's why I have the water and then what I'm gonna do is take a small flat dampen it and squeeze off the extra and then I'm just gonna put the corner of my brush into that color and I am going to pull up a shadow I'm just gonna make sure I keep it on the same side see that I've got that nice shadow there keep going up and around hopefully everything's dry now when I get to the top the we're, we're looking on the other side of the candy cane you know what I mean the shadow changes so I'm gonna go on that side now see how much dimensional that shadow that candy cane looks compared to this one this one looks like it has a little bit more um, three dimension okay so we're gonna do the same thing I like to clean my brush though whenever I go to reload blot it off or just squeeze out the excess. I'm loading up one side and I always have to double check it to make sure I, I know, remember what side the, uh, the paint's on. And then I'm gonna go up on this one. And if you feel like it's not blending, you can go back and forth a couple times to get it to move. Cause you, I mean, you don't wanna have too much water on a box like this cause it's, you don't want it to just be running all over the place. There, and it's, it's really subtle. But, um, but it gives you a little bit more dimension. So now I have this brush. I'm gonna go ahead and base coat in my little um, bow here. And I think I'm gonna use green because I already have red, red and white and I think that'll look really Christmassy. So I'm going to go ahead and base coat everything in. Now, if you have a hard time with this and you're painting and you're like, geez, I don't, I don't trust that I know where my lines are, you can always uh, let it dry and reposition your um, pattern on top and retrace it if you need to. So now I want to lighten certain areas. So I'm gonna pick up some white on my brush. I'm gonna do that button in the center of my bow. I'm going to do the um, part of my bow that's not in the shadow. Now this technique would be a little bit easier in oils because your cut your paint would stay wet and it would would blend for you a little bit easier. Do this part over here and under the uh, reveal part. And I'm just adding some of that onto the bow. And white's more opaque, so it actually covers up that candy cane uh, that's showing through. Picking up a little more green so I can kind of blend the two values together, blend the dark and the light. Don't worry about any char chalk marks you still have there because those can be taken away. Think of where something's overlapping, that's where it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be darkest underneath where something is overlapping. Okay, now I think I'm gonna grab one of these round ones. And I'm gonna go with that, I'm gonna take that, uh, that green, I'm gonna add a smidgen of black to it because we've added black in the background already, so I'm not too concerned about having black in here. You could, if you're not painting with black, you could add a little red to it. And I am going in and adding my deepest shadows. Now I'm going to clean off the brush. You can go with a smaller one if you want, but I'm doing the green and some white and I'm going to add some highlights. And you can play with it as much as you want to get just the look you're after. I find just putting, sometimes all you need is just a little stroke and that's 
all it takes. And then we're gonna let this dry before we do anything else to it. So I love the candy cane striping. So we're gonna do that actually on this part. This is chalk. I set my thing in the chalk, but that will come off with a damp rag, so I'm not worried about it. Um, so we're gonna work on some candy cane stripes on the pole here. And I'm gonna clean off this round brush. I think this round brush will work really well. And if I want my paint to flow, I want a little bit of water, so I'm just gonna let my brush be a little wet. And if I want a nice point, I kind of twirl my brush in the paint so then I have points like that. So I think I might do a three color stripe here. I'm gonna do a thin red stripe. And then I think I might do a thick red stripe. And then I might do a thin, I'm just trying to decide how many stripes I wanna do. Maybe I'll do thin red, thick red, thin green or something. So let me just get all my thin reds in. Do a thick red. Don't worry about it too much. Just get those uh, stripes painted in there because if you've ever looked at a candy cane, it's not perfect. And I think when you have a little bit of a wavy line in there, it actually looks kind of nice because it does take some of the perfection out. And now I'm gonna do green. And I'm gonna use that same uh, green that we've been using all along. And see what I mean about a little bit of a wiggly line? I think it's really pretty actually. And you can repeat this same design all along this white ridge that you base coated. Okay, the last thing I want to do here uh, for painting is I want to put um, Santa Claus's address on here because I think this would be a really fun thing to do for like letters to Santa, for kids to do letters to Santa. So I am going to use a the, one of the small rounds. So this is a number two round. You can use whatever one you're comfortable with and some white paint. And I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze out some fresh white paint for this. And when you're doing lettering, you have to make sure that your paint is fluid enough to come off your brush easily. So let's just try it straight out of the tube and see how it looks. So let's do, oh, this is coming up. This is pretty good right out of the tube. So S. comes that's all right. Let's do an A. I don't know if we'll be able to fit it all in here. It's kind of a small mailbox. And there you can dab the um, ends of the letters if you want to. I'm not a very good, um, I don't have very good handwriting so I'm sure you can do much better than I do than I did, but that gives you an idea. I think that's kind of fun. I mean, you can mail your letters to Santa. It would be so cute in like a um, in a classroom or a business or a toy shop or right to decorate your own home. I think it'd be really cute. So one other thing I wanted to do here was to give it kind of some snow. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use a toothbrush, just a clean old toothbrush. I just throw them in the dishwasher um, when, you know, somebody's done with it, rather than throw it away. And it's such a wonderful art tool. So what I'm doing here, I think you can probably see that I've, I dumped, dumped it in water and look, this is kind of like the consistency of like, um, I don't know, maybe like whole milk. So I'm just going to give it another little spritz of water there. So you end up with this really inky consistency. And this is a little messy and you might wanna do this inside of a cardboard box just to kind of keep the mess down. But what you wanna do is, and I'm gonna test it on the back because I haven't painted anything on the back yet. So see, you get this beautiful snow look. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put as much or as little as I want. I just think it really makes it look snowy and beautiful. Now you can do this to really any sort of craft project. If you have a card, um, if you have just like a, I love like paper mache boxes for storage and you can do those with the same technique. I think it'd be really pretty. And there you go, this is done. Now, once it's all completely dry, I'd probably give it an hour or two. I would go ahead and put a coat of either spray sealer or brush on uh, satin varnish. And that's gonna just protect it if something gets spilled on it. Um, and it will give it an all over sheen. So that way, if you're using a couple different brands of paint, um, it'll they'll all look like they're the same. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you do wanna do this exact same project and you want the um, 
patterns for doing your candy cane and your little motif on the side. I'm not going to even put up a pattern for my lettering because I'm sure you can do better on your own. I will put that on my website so anyone can download it for free. And make sure you also go to my website because I'll be giving away a set of the chunky brushes and the tri grip brushes from our sponsor Fab Art. Um, also put information um, on how to order these if you want to as well as a 20% off coupon code so you can save some cash. I know coming up with really fun Christmas gift ideas is tricky and I think think it's great to give kids the gift of art because it's not something they're going to get sick of in um, in a month. They're going to keep painting and keep playing and it's something that will always serve them. And I just love the fact that these plastic bristles are so, the plastic handles are so adorable because I tend to leave my brushes in the water and, uh, and it really helps me out. And uh, I'm glad that that is available for kids' brushes. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this project and until next time, happy crafting!